Welcome to our midweek service of evening prayer for the season of Lent. For this evening we'll be using a service which was first printed in the Old Black Prayer Book. It's the first alternative form of evening prayer. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy sin, and healeth all thine infirmities, who saveth thy life from destruction, and crowneth thee with mercy and loving kindness. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah, blessed be his holy name. Let our mouth, O Lord, be filled with thy praise, that we may sing of thy glory and thy greatness all the day long. Let us thank Almighty God for all his blessings, for all thy blessings in creation, for the beauty of earth and sea and sky, for thy manifold works, and for the wisdom wherewith thou hast made them all. We thank thee, O God. For the happiness of our earthly life, for all our powers of mind and body, for faithful friends, and for the joy of loving and being loved, we thank thee, O God. For the great salvation given to us in Jesus Christ our Lord, for the gracious words spoken by him, and for the perfect example of his life on earth, we thank thee, O God for his suffering and his dying, for his rising again and his ascending into heaven, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we thank thee, O God. For all the blessings brought to us in thy holy church, for the preaching of thy word and the grace of the sacraments, and for our fellowship in Christ with thee and with one another, we thank thee, O God. For thy long suffering with our sin and our unbelief, for thy calls to repentance, and for thy gracious welcome to all who return to thee, we thank thee, O God. For all thy fatherly discipline, for our share in the cross of Christ, for strength given according to our need, and for sorrow turned into joy, we thank thee, O God. For all thy servants departed this life, in thy faith and fear, for the example they have left us, and for the blessed hope of reunion with them hereafter, we thank thee, O God, for the hope of a new heaven and a new earth, for the place that our Lord has gone to prepare for us, and for the promised vision of thy glory, we thank thee, O God. Our psalm for this evening is psalm number four. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy upon me and hearken unto my prayer. 
O ye sons of men, how long will ye blaspheme mine honour, and have such pleasure in vanity, and seek after lying? Know this also, that the Lord hath chosen to himself the man that is godly. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe, and sin not. Commune with your own heart, and in your chamber, and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness, and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than men have when corn and wine increase. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And a reading for this evening from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter beginning at the thirtieth verse. Jesus feeds the five thousand. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not ever have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, You give them something to eat. They said to him, That would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was five thousand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The miracle of the feeding of the five thousand is the only miracle of Jesus which is recorded in all four Gospels, signifying just how important this miracle was to the Christians of the early church. And it's not hard to see why it was so important to them. The connection between the feeding of the 5,000 and the celebration of Holy Communion are quite obvious. Indeed, in John's Gospel, the connection is made even more explicit. After the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus is drawn into a discussion with those who had flocked after him, a discussion about the manna of Moses and the bread given by God. It is in the course of this discussion that Jesus states, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And again, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This is a pivotal moment in John's Gospel as he recounts the ministry of Jesus, because we are told that from this moment, many of Jesus' disciples turned back and no longer followed him. The popularity and acclaim which had followed Jesus up to that point now turned to increasing hostility and suspicion in the minds of many. But the connection between the feeding of the 5,000 and the celebration of Holy Communion in the early church is both implicit and explicit. We know how important the celebration of Holy Communion was for those early Christians, so it should not surprise us that each of the four Gospels record this miracle. Our first glimpse of the fledgling church confirms this. The Acts of the Apostles tells us of the four features of that first congregation in Jerusalem. We are told that they devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. In one of the earliest books of the New Testament, the first letter to the Corinthians, written about 20 years after Jesus' death and resurrection, the Apostle Paul speaks of the Lord's Supper, how it should be received and approached, and indeed gives an indication that a rudimentary liturgy had already evolved for its celebration. And we know from secular sources outside the Christian community of its importance to them. Pliny the Younger, when governor of Bithynia, tells us that Christians met together on the first day of the week to be bound together, he says, sacramento, with an oath. But we recognise that word as the sacrament, that is, communion. We know elsewhere that Christians were sometimes betrayed to the authorities when they were found to be carrying the bread and wine of communion to the sick and the housebound. So it was immensely important and therefore we should not be surprised to see, for example, the chapels of that early church hidden in caves and catacombs and cellars, decorated with representations of the Last Supper, with the feeding of the 5,000 and with symbols of bread and fish. The story of the miracle itself is again reasonably straightforward. Jesus had first sent out his disciples to go through the villages of Galilee preaching and healing. And they'd returned with reports of their success. But then had come news of John the Baptist's execution at the hands of Herod Antipas. Jesus and his disciples had decided to get away from the crowd thronging around them. But the crowd had followed them when they came to a remote and deserted place. When evening came, the crowd showed no signs of dispersing, but there was no food to be had there. Jesus told the disciples to organize the people into groups. Then he took a boy's packed lunch, five small rolls of bread and two small fish, blessed the food, broke it into pieces, and gave it to the disciples to distribute to the crowd. Everyone, we are told, was fed till they were satisfied and there was enough left over to fill 12 baskets. Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it and gave it out to the people. The connection forward to the future, to the celebration of Holy Communion in the early church is clear. But what is not so clear to us but which would have been blindingly obvious to the crowd and the disciples, is that Jesus was also making a connection to the past, to the towering figure of Moses, the one who was perceived to be the founder and father of the Jewish faith. The feeding of the 5,000 takes place in a remote and desert place, precisely like the wilderness into which Moses had led the people of Israel. 
There was no good to be had there, precisely the situation in which the people of Israel find themselves when they had left Egypt, when they complained bitterly, we have no food. Jesus orders the disciples to organise the crowd into groups of hundreds and fifties, precisely as Moses had divided the companies of Israel when his father-in-law Jethro had advised him to appoint officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens. On a side note, at this point, there are interesting details in the story which suggest that, once again, we are dealing with an eyewitness account of a miracle. We are told that the people sat down in groups or sections or companies and sat down on the green grass. Well, the green grass suggests that this takes place in springtime. But the word for groups or sections or companies in Mark's Gospel is the Greek word prasiai. It is the only time this word is used in the whole of the New Testament. But it is the Greek word used for flower beds in a garden, or the rows of vegetables in a vegetable plot or on an allotment. Whoever witnessed this must have been struck by how the rows of people looked like the rows of vegetables in an allotment. But of course it is in the miracle itself that the real symbolism lies. Jesus provides the bread and the fish, the bread and the meat, to feed the hungry. Just as Moses has presided over the provision of the manna, the bread from heaven, and the quail to feed the hungry Israelites in the wilderness. And this is really the point and the heart of this miracle. Of the many great figures and heroes of the Jewish scriptures, none was more important than Moses, the man who had brought the people of Israel out of slavery and bondage in Egypt, established the covenant between them and God, and most importantly of all, gave them that which identified them as the chosen and special people of God. For he gave them the law, which expressed and epitomised all that it meant to be Jewish. But, and Jesus reminded them of this, it was not Moses who gave all these things, but God himself. Yes, Moses spoke to God face to face, received the Ten Commandments, knew God as no one else has ever known him, and for 40 years had inspired, led, shaped, and forged the Hebrew peoples into the people of God. But always behind the great figure of Moses moved the far greater figure of the Lord God Almighty. And Jesus reminds the disciples and those who followed that it was not Moses who had given them bread from heaven, but the Father who had given them the true bread from heaven. By taking the food, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it to the people, Jesus is demonstrating that he far surpasses even the greatness of Moses. And of course, to the disciples and those who followed in the crowd, the only one who could surpass Moses is God himself. Once again in this miracle, we see God himself, the creator and the sustainer of all things. God himself, at work, in power, in Jesus.
Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us all our sins, deliver us from all evil, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the Church of this land, Hear us, most merciful God, for that part of the Church which Thou hast planted in our land, that it may hold fast the faith which Thou gavest unto the saints, and in the end bear much fruit to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the extension of Christ's kingdom throughout the world. O God of all the nations of the earth, Remember the multitudes of the heathen, who, though created in thine image, are ignorant of thy love, and grant that by the prayers and labours of thy holy church they may be delivered from all superstition and unbelief, and brought to worship thee, through him whom thou hast sent to be our salvation, the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the President and all who are set in authority in this land. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless all chief rulers called to be stewards of thine authority in their several places, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness and peace to the honour of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray thee, in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with thy pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for those in affliction or distress. Almighty Father, be present this night, we beseech thee, with those who are in sorrow, in suffering, or in distress. We pray particularly for those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, and for those who have the care and responsibility for others, those who advise on public health, those who serve in our public health services, our doctors and nurses and staff in our hospitals, nursing homes, and general practices, and those who care and love for others at home. Be thou our abiding stay and succour for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us sum up our worship and our petitions in the words which our Saviour Christ has taught us and say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
collect for this Lenten season. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we, who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world, may repose upon thy eternal changelessness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. Amen.